So have super PACs changed the American political landscape forever? Here to give us his take on big money in this political cycle is Cenk Uger. He's the host of the Young Turks program on Current TV, and he is also working to separate money from politics here in the United States, which sounds to me like a full-time job, Cenk. Yeah, I hear you, brother. <laughs> uh, it is going to be a very difficult task. Uh, unfortunately, what a lot of people don't know about the United States is that, ready for this grand statement, we have lost our democracy. It, it doesn't really function anymore. And, you know, you hear people say that from time to time, and but they don't back it up with facts. Now we've gotten to a state that we could absolutely back it up with facts. Uh, did you know that for people running for Congress, 93% of the time, the person with more money wins? In the Senate, it's 94% of the time, people with more money wins. So it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It doesn't matter if you're a conservative or liberal. It doesn't matter what the issues are. The only thing that matters is, do you have more money than your opponent? So obviously, the votes don't matter. The ideology doesn't matter. The main thing that matters is who's got more money. So, how so is that is not a functioning or representative democracy. Let me ask you this, then. How have super PACs changed the political landscape, in your view, in terms of money and big money? That's what we're talking about here is big money. Right. So these uh, the Supreme Court decisions have actually changed the landscape of the country and the politics of it tremendously. Uh, it actually started in the 1970s when they said that money equals speech and that corporations are like human beings and have First Amendment rights. So hence they could spend money in politics. Now what Citizens United did was it put that on steroids. It said that corporations and rich people can spend unlimited money basically buying our politicians, that this is legalized bribery. And from then on, it has been an absolute tsunami of money pouring into politics, uh, in, a, in essence, purchasing almost every election that there is for wh whoever's the highest bidder. Jenk, uh, Hank Greenberg is the former CEO of AIG. I'm not suggesting he has a super PAC, but I think his quote that he's famous for probably applies to a lot of the people that do. He said, all he wants in life is an unfair advantage. Does this give them an unfair advantage? Of course, <laughs> of course it does. I mean, who really thinks that, hey, you know, I'm an average uh, voter in the middle of Missouri and I gave my five or 20 bucks to a candidate of my choice and I went and you know, voted for him, et cetera. Do you think you have as much power as Sheldon Adelson, who was given $71 million, who's a casino mogul out of Las Vegas? Now, you think he doesn't want a return on investment? How about the Koch brothers, who have raised $400 million? Now, why do they do that? Because even the smallest tax cut given to them by Mitt Romney or whoever else that they have purchased will give them billions in return. The deregulation of their industries that pollute this country and shift the costs onto us give them billions in return. Obviously, they're buying our politicians. And by the way, the American people are perfectly aware of that. If you ask them, 84% say we've got to get the influence of money out of politics. The only people who don't agree, of course, are the politicians who are bought and the people who are buying them, the large corporations and the large contributors like the Cokes. Okay, now, to play devil's advocate, a lot of the people who argue with you say, hey, look, the founders said free speech. They didn't say free speech for the poor. They didn't say free speech for the rich. They said free speech. And uh, as one suggests, regulating the money spent on discord is actually, discourse is actually regulating discourse. So what would you say to the opponents who disagree with your contentions? So two points on that. First of all, <laughs> people should read the Founding Fathers. Thomas Jefferson was nearly shouting from the rooftop, watch out for corporations, watch out for banks, they'll destroy our democracy. So please, for the love of God, go le read what the Founding Fathers wrote, warning us about this exact moment. Now, on the issue of speech equaling money, well, that is a tough issue. And so if you were to say to me, hey, listen, you know, I think that you should be able to spend money on issues or policies that you care about, I would say, hey, listen, we could have that conversation, but I can't have you giving it directly to politicians because that's an obvious bribe. I also can't have you doing it right before an election because then that's a, an implicit bribe that's fairly obvious as well. So we can set rules and standards so that allows rich and poor to voice their opinions as loudly as they like. But our elections have to be clean. If they're not, again, we've lost our democracy. 